This is the Farragut class battle cruiser, the pride of the Federal Navy. It is one of the largest vessels in use by any military and elite. Its size dwarfs even the largest ships and make them look like Earth from Mars's perspective. Its size means that it, it is extremely powerful in combat, and information about the capital ship is heavily classified thanks to its massive power. Now let's analyze how this behemoth of a battleship works. The Farragut class battle cruiser is a capital ship produced by Core Dynamics, the Federation's closest contractor for shipbuilding. Standing at over 300 meters tall, 2 kilometers long, and 800 meters wide, it sure is a behemoth. It's capable of mounting di many different types of weapons deployed on both the port and starboard size, as, as well as having room for different types of ships like the smaller Federal Corvette and multiple squadrons of F-63 Condors, which can bolster the, the Farragut's combat capabilities even more. The architecture of the Farragut follows the Federation's utilitarian design, having armor plates which appear bulky and polygonal rather than the Imperial counterpart's elegant and curvy design. There's also a split in the middle connected by smaller bridges which we'll get to later. The Farragut is heavily armed due to its sides, and we can see a total of 36 weapon hardpoints in action. We have a multitude of laser turrets as well as kinetic ones as well, using the lethal kinetic plus thermal combo. These are all located on the starboard and port side symmetrically, and we can also even see some torpedo tubes as well, which aren't in the use in the game, unfortunately. However, we can just say in, that in the actual lore, these torpedo tubes are extremely deadly, and you can think of them as normal torpedoes, but beefed up to capital ship levels. We also have what appears to be where F-63 Condors deploy with small hangar doors and launch racks, The Farragut also must be able to do a multitude of tasks, including troop transport, combat, fire support, and more. Though a large amount of data on the Farragut is classified, we can try to speculate what is going on inside of the structure. First of all, the frameshift drive is probably on par with the Drake-class carrier from the Brewer Corporation, as both of these ships use frameshift porter portals to traverse the galaxy, seen in these two clips. As you can see, these two jump animations are basically the same, so the FSD is likely the same as each other, but who really knows? It might be worse or better, but we really don't know anyway. The Farragut also carries many smaller vessels like the F-63s, so it must have a maintenance and repair hangar to store, repair, and maintain the fighters. Also due to the sheer size of this battle cruiser, there is a crew of over 7,000 to perform the duties aboard the ship. Speaking of the crew, there probably is a huge crew quarters facility somewhere for his mariners. Being this huge of a ship probably means that there are also troop transports as well. And even if the role can be done by normal ships such as the Federal Dropship, the Farragut can easily carry entire battalions or even regiments to different military garrisons around Federal territory. Oh yes, and we also have to include the two huge thrusters on the back. As for certain battle tactics, the Farragut probably must go into formation and move around to perform a flank or surroundment. So here, we just simply analyze what could be in the battle cruiser anyway. I didn't want to go too far into speculation as a lot of information regarding the capital ship is classified via federal law. There are some nice little details on the ship everyone might have not noticed, including the thrusters in the front to slow the ship down, and lateral thrusters as well. There's also this little nub here, which most likely houses navigation systems due to the antenna-like things sticking out of the thing. Now, we really haven't seen a main bridge anywhere, and it's actually kind of genius if you think about it. Because, as high-ranking officers and government officials reside primarily in the bridge when going somewhere, it would be an easy target for enemies to take the out per valuable personnel if it were exposed. So instead, the bridge is likely somewhere in the middle of the vessel, where it's protected from penetration and the vacuum of space, thanks to the heavy hull surrounding it. 
there are also these little bridges coming out in the split between the two sides so people can get to one place or another. There are also classified statistics such as jump range and cost. Now I try to speculate the jump range here and we'll be assuming that the Farragate class and Drake class uh, have the same range of drives. The Drake class is a lot larger than the Farragut and has the uh, maximum jump range of 500 light years. So, if they use the same frame shift drive on the Farragut, which is smaller, it would mean that it would have more of a jump range, right? Wrong. Remember, the Farragut is much heavier armor and many more facilities in inside it for uh, combat, and the whole mass is likely much, much greater in the Drake class. So if they use the same frame shift drive, the Farragut's massive size would likely negate or even go over the Drake's size and overcompensate, leading to the conclusion that the Farragut would have an equal or less of a jump range than the Drake class carrier. So maybe around 200 light years. Oh, and the cost. My estimate is 10 billion credits due to the heavier armor and composites that is making up the ship. And also all of the weapons and classified equipment in there as well. And these are obviously much, much more expensive than civilian versions. I've also got some old combat footage which has Farragut class battlecruisers demonstrating its might upon some uh, naval units, like here. I'll just show a little bit without any commentary.